you're sitting there and you're thinking, I wish I could play this game on this fantastic console, but I have no analog inputs on my new HD 4K television. Well, watch this video and you'll find out how. Hello there, Oz Gamer Dude here, showing Wardy's retro tips on how to get your HD tally showing your old analog console. Um, there are two ways to do this, and one of them being the Theme Meister or the Frame Meister, whatever you prefer. I like the Arnold Schwarzenegger version. <laughs> um, other than that, there's also the HDMI internal modification to your old consoles. And we're gonna go through both ways in this video, so watch now. Okay guys, let's jump straight into the Frame Meister. So the Frame Meister essentially picks up the analog signal from your old console, in this case it's the PlayStation 1, and then puts it into itself and converts the analog signal into a HDMI signal. Um, which then goes into your input on the back of your monitor or TV that doesn't have an analog input on the back, instead just HDMI. Um, so we're gonna go through right now the basic setup, um, which is the cables and everything you'll need to get this setup going. Okay, firstly, you wanna get your power sorted out. Now, the Frame Meister comes with a Japanese power pack. Um, you'll need one of these converters if you wanna do it this route. I personally don't recommend this. Um, I recommend grabbing one of these cable, uh, these adapters, which you can get from any supermarket or wherever. It's basically a universal adapter. Let's get this plugged in. Uh, make sure it is at five volts, because um, that's what the Frame Meister takes. All right, so our Frame Meister now has power. Now we need to get our video signal coming from our PlayStation 1 into our Frame Meister. So let's get that going. You'll need one of these adapters. It's a SCART RGB adapter. Okay, next thing, we're going to use our, this is an, an extender for me um, personally, because my HDMI signal does not pick up the analog sound just purely through uh, the SCART and HDMI conversion process. So I've got these little red and white analog uh, output extensions on here. This is a little tricky little tool. We're gonna plug that in. And I'm gonna plug in my red and white into here. And then next thing is I'm going to plug my PlayStation 1 here into my, uh, into my HDMI converter, the Frame Meister. So that just goes into that little end there, into the female SCAR end. So we've got all our video sorted out from our PlayStation 1 into our Frame Meister. Next thing is simply, oh sugar, my little stand there is gone mental. Um, next thing is, just plug in the HDMI, so let's plug that in. I don't think that needs a description. There we go. So I've got all our videos sorted out. Next thing is testing it. Um, just a quick background on SCART. So SCART is basically the component or the closest thing to uh, getting 720 resolution out of your old consoles that wasn't um, just you know purely, you know that yellow cable. So it's like those yellow, blue, and green component cables that you can find on Xbox 360s and stuff. Um, SCART was the closest thing to that way back in the day. Um, Australia didn't really have these. Um, you could find them on VCRs, but not in Australia, or consoles and stuff. Um, I think they were more widely used in the US and Europe. Um, so yeah, a bit of background on SCART. It's very cool. Um, I think it's very cool. Anyway, okay, so first things first, let's turn on our Frame Meister. And you'll probably find that when you get your Frame Meister, it'll all be in Japanese. Um, so there will be firmware to update this to English. I've, here's a little tutorial. And this tutorial is purely just for our XRGB uh, Frame Meister Mini. Um, I'm not sure how to do it on the newer models as I don't have one, so you might just have to look that up. But in the link below, you'll find the firmware update in the description if you have an XRGB Frame Master Mini. 
So yeah, check that out. Uh, now that we have our English firmware update done, um, you will need to go into our RGB. So boom, RGB whoop, located on up here. Sweet. So we're in, on RGB. Um, you'll find that on certain HDMI, uh, I don't know, televisions and monitors, it'll come up with this big, ugly looking purple thing. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to go into menu, and then we need to go into output mode, and you wanna go off of HDMI into DVI. Fantastic, so now we've got the classic blue, that's how the frame mice is supposed to look. And now all we need to do is turn on our PlayStation 1. Big thumbs up there. That's, uh, that's worked out pretty well. I'm gonna have a quick play because Metal Gear Solid is a freaking sick game. So basically guys, this is the HDMI conversion process that's grabbed the signal from the PlayStation 1, converted it from analog into HDMI, and then into the back of our 4K monitor here. Uh, I've got it currently in 720, and it looks pretty freaking awesome. Um, I think it does, that's amazing. The only downside to the Frame Meister is the fact that it does have latency issues. Um, so, not latency issues, but so much as just latency. Um, because there's so many things going on, it adds a few milliseconds for each kind of input that's going on here. Um, so, if you're doing fighting games and stuff, it can be and I, I don't notice it. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't notice it, but I know a lot of people would that are really, you know, whatever about that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's one downside. But now we're going to go through just a purely HDMI mod on one of our other consoles. So let's check that out. So to install this HDMI mod onto your retro console, you will need to purchase the HDMI modification kit. These are typically around $130 to about $200, depending on your uh, console that you're going to purchase, U US dollars by the way, um, console you're gonna purchase it for. Um, so, you also need to know how to solder. Um, I've done a couple myself, however, I recommend personally going, if you're in Australia, to Eugene. Um, I've had a couple different services install uh, my mods into my consoles before, but no one's really compared to Eugene um, for Australia. Um, and he's a recommended seller from Black Dog uh, dot tech. There's also a range of different uh, service technicians here um, recommended from blackdog.tech. Uh, now, I recommend these guys only because the website says so. Um, you might have someone that you would trust with this. However, these guys are certified uh, blackdog.tech um, service technicians. So there's a reason they're recommended and it's because they're professional, they're fast, which is the main thing. And also their prices are usually fairly reasonable compared to other uh, service techs. I've given mine to someone once and it took four months to install. I gave it to Eugene in Australia, recommended from blackdog.tech. And uh, he had it done within the week and mailed back. I could not believe it. So I um, highly recommend these guys, uh, yeah. So now I'm gonna walk you through connecting the HDMI from your HDMI modded console onto your modern flat screen. Okay guys, in this example, I'm gonna show you the internal mod, uh, HDMI mod of an old console, which is the GameCube in this example. Again, the consoles that can have this mod are the Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, the GameCube and the Wii, the Dreamcast, or recently the PlayStation 1. I'm not aware of any other HDMI mods for any other consoles, except the Xbox, um, but I'll get into that into another video, um, a little bit more detail. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> so this is the GameCube. We're going straight from here into the monitor, so I'm just gonna plug it in. Now, you'll need your HDMI lead, and as it's HDMI mini, you'll need an adapter or a HDMI to mini HDMI. I actually recommend having just the cable because it can lead to handshaking issues, which means that basically you get a black output um, on your monitor, which isn't fun when you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Uh, bada bing, bada boom, there we go. And secondly, I'm gonna chuck in our power. Um, here we go. And let's get some game happening. We've got Metroid 2 here, so let's chuck that in. Boop. Sweet. 
Alrighty, let's power this sucker up. Oh, <laughs> no, that's, there we go. Obviously I don't play the GameCube a whole lot. And as you can see here, we've got a HDMI output. How cool is that? And there's no cables, no nothing like um, the SCART converter. And an extra bonus is with the HDMI mod is that there is no like latency. So if you're playing fighting games and stuff, you won't like, especially Super Smash Bros or something like that, you won't notice any real difference, uh, any sort of delay, sorry. Like how sick is this? Anyway, it just looks fantastic. I mean, that's 720, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, that's the HDMI mod that you can get from blackdog.tech, um, link is below. I highly recommend getting these modifications. They do cost a fair bit to purchase and mod, um, especially if you're not doing it yourself. However, uh, they're definitely worth it if you wanna play old consoles um, without using an emulator on a PC, you wanna like use the original hardware, which for my kind of hobby is definitely freaking sweet. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you guys for watching this with me today. Uh, <laughs> I have to say, it is very fun doing this stuff. I enjoy trying to get old stuff working on new televisions and new technology. Um, I'm not sure if you do or if you just want it cause, just because you want to play old school games. That's how I started and then a passion kind of started uh, developing. So I recommend doing this if you're interested in old school games, highly recommend doing this. Um, there is no best way. Uh, probably the Frame Meister is probably the cheapest way in the long long run um, because you can do multiple consoles through this way however if you do the true HDMI uh, output from your console modification um, this is probably the best way with zero latency or very minimal latency um, onto your HD tally so it's like instant response with the controller very important in fighting games <laughs> I stream at 8.30 p.m. every Saturday Australian Eastern Standard Time. See the link above. This is where I just play a bunch of retro games um, and I also take recommendations on what to play. So yeah, you should uh, check that out. 6.30, I mean, sorry, 8.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, and other than that, have a fantastic Christmas. Thank you for joining me. Oz Gamer Dude, out. So I just figured out that my controller is stuffed, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I typically use uh, the pink controller, don't judge me. Um, but yeah, this, this controller stuff, so I can't play. Maybe some of the buttons work, but mostly not.